as all of their nefarious deeds that we have been telling you about are being exposed. This is the worst abuse of power, corruption scandal in American history. It's all coming out, everything we've been telling you. The president rightly demanding to know just how pervasive the spying was on his campaign and who in the Obama administration was involved. Rod Rosenstein, he's responding. He's telling the DOJ inspector general he can investigate. This is only providing cover for his deep state friends and trying to delay what will be inevitable. Bad idea, I'll tell you why. Also, the media and even Hillary Clinton's former top campaign aide for decades, Mark Penn, are now starting to admit what a huge abuse of power scandal this is. And also tonight, we have all these deep state actors, John Brennan, James Clapper, Sally Yates, all melting down over these spy revelations. So in desperation, you're now predictably lashing out at President Trump. It's not going to work. And also tonight, a bombshell report from our own Sarah Carter. The FISA memos that the DOJ is refusing to hand over could very well hold the key to the Obama FBI Trump surveillance. Now, we've got a lot to go. Stay with us for the hour. This is an important breaking news opening monologue. All right, brand new tonight, after a meeting between Trump, the FBI Director Chris Wray, Rod Rosenstein, and other top intel officials, the White House is saying President Trump and the Department of Justice are now asking the Inspector General to investigate the Obama administration and the spying they did on the Trump campaign. And the White House is also revealing tonight that Chief of Staff John Kelly, General Kelly, is setting up a meeting for Congress so they will see the documents that constitutionally they have been asking for and the DOJ has been obstructing and stonewalling. Really, I'll believe it when I see those documents. Now, this is the same material that Rod Rosenstein has refused to turn over for months. Now, he, his name, by the way, you want to keep an eye on. I'll have more on, on Rosenstein in a minute. Now, first, what's unfolding about the deep state is so dramatic, so shocking, but at the same time so very predictable, given everything we have now been uncovering for over 18 months. Now, we are now seeing the cracks in the deep state, in this dam. It's about to burst, and all of this information is now beginning to cascade out. Even the New York Times, the Washington Post, are now confirming just in the last week everything we have been uncovering, again, for 18 months. It is the biggest abuse of power corruption scandal. It makes Watergate look like a parking ticket. Now, the House Intel Committee Chair, Devin Nunes, he's reacting by saying this is crossing a serious red line. Very important. If they ran a spy ring or an informant ring and they were paying people uh, within the Trump campaign, if any of that is true, that is an absolute red line. There is not an honest person in this country that thinks it's okay if sources, informants, whatever you want to call them, go around and start passing out money all over the globe to do what? To, to secretly put yourself into a presidential campaign? That's not acceptable in this country. That's not acceptable in the United States of America. Chairman Nunes is also saying there might be more than one FBI informant. You've got to be kidding me. Watch this. Nobody was ever interested in an informant. Uh, we asked for specific documents that we still have not received from the Department of Justice. So they continue to leak out things about this informant. Uh, and we don't know if there's one informant or more informants uh, because there's so much out there now. It's really getting tough to follow. And all we're asking for is give us the documentation that you used to start this investigation. Hand it over. These type of tactics spying on an opposition party in an election year. Are you kidding me? This is what you'd see in the former Soviet Union. Venezuela, not the United States of America. Just look at this quote from the Wall Street Journal editorial board. Listen to this. We cannot recall, recall a similar case, even in the J. Edgar Hoover days, when the FBI decided it needed to snoop on a presidential campaign. Now, this is the same J. Edgar Hoover, who was notorious for having files on just about everyone in Washington. That is how serious all of this is. Even Clinton aide and advisor, Mark Penn, he's worked with the Clintons for 20 years, is calling out this scandal for what it is. This is a game-changing moment, and Penn has worked for the Clintons forever and served as Hillary's chief strategist for her campaign in 2008. He is now calling this witch hunt for what it is and literally writing an op-ed in The Hill, stopping Robert Mueller to protect us all. 
Stunning headline. Penn goes on to explain how the facts are now undeniable. Mueller is on a crusade to get the president of the United States to overturn a duly elected president. He uses the term deep state, that it's real, that the FBI rigged the Clinton investigation and then targeted Donald Trump and his campaign when he was president-elect and now president. And Penn explained more on this on the story with Martha McCallum earlier tonight. Take a look. I think that the uh, inspector general's report is coming out. <clears throat> I think Nunes is finding out, like, what are the origins of the investigation. And there doesn't seem to be a real concrete intelligence origin for this investigation. And without a foundation, one wonders, what did we spend an entire year on? What did we disrupt everyone who was in the campaign, everyone who was in the administration? And also, former Solicitor General for the U.S., Ted Olson, he's out with a new piece where he explains how Robert Mueller's witch hunt could be setting up a massive constitutional crisis. And, of course, investigative reporter Cheryl Atkinson, she has a defining piece on all of this, literally called The Collusion Against Trump, an entire timeline. She breaks down every single key moment in this entire massive abuse of power scandal. We will refer to this throughout history because it's been going on for 18 months. Now the mainstream media, even they, finally are st starting to catch on and admit that what we've been reporting and what others on the show have been reporting and other people, what we've been covering, we're now being proven right. They have to admit it. Look at this headline from the Washington Post over the weekend. Secret FBI source for Russia investigation met with three Trump advisors during the campaign. Here's a USA Today report. Look at this cover. It says... And even, by the way, even fake news liberal CNN, they can't ignore all the facts, all the evidence. Okay, it's taken them well over a year, but finally the media is starting to realize that they have missed the single biggest story in their lifetime as they pursued Russia, Russia, Stormy. Now, it's a massive abuse of power. We first reported on this March 7th, 2017, about FISA surveillance of the Trump campaign. Now, President Trump, he has every single right tonight to be outraged about what has happened. He has every right to want to know the truth. You, the American people, need to know the truth. We need to expose all of this criminal behavior. All of these deep state actors need to be exposed and all of them held accountable. The deputy attorney general, Rod Rosenstein, okay, he's quick to respond to President Trump demanding the Department of Justice get to the bottom of it all. So Rosenstein is trying to make himself out to be a hero, but it's a total farce. Here's why. Rosenstein is doing what he always does, and that is protecting all of his deep state friends. Now, the deputy attorney general, he knows that by referring this to the inspector general, it will buy them a year to 18 months and protect all these deep state actors. Now, it's going to take Michael Horowitz well over a year. We don't have over a year to uncover this. We need a full FBI, DOJ, rank-and-file, field office investigation into all of this, because what they're trying to do is slowly leak out this information, a slow bleed to cover themselves. It's all a CYA. And remember, they know what's out there. They know they're about to get caught. This is all about controlling the narrative, spinning the narrative, trying to protect themselves, and they probably learned a thing or two from Hillary about acid-washing hard drives. We've got to be careful. Now, there's another major component to all of this. Rosenstein knows that the inspector general, he doesn't have any real prosecutorial power. Horowitz can't convene a grand jury. He cannot indict people. He can only give criminal referrals, like in the case of Andrew McCabe. And on top of all of that, as we're seeing with this IG report on the Clinton email investigation, the FBI, the DOJ, both get to review and try and refute facts and redact information, again, probably falsely in the name of national security. We have been saying Congress needs to see these documents. We have checks and balances, separation of powers, co-equal branches of government, and you know what? They are purposefully obstructing, and it looks like some of this might start to happen. All right, Sarah Carter, she'll join us in a few minutes, breaking another explosive story tonight. Here's the headline. Concealed FISA documents may hold the key to Trump's surveillance. Now, what Sarah is reporting, a number of very key details that Rod Rosenstein, he signed the final FISA warrant, you know, using the fake phony dossiers, the bulk of information. Why? To spy on Trump campaign associate Carter Page, using the unverified 
never corroborated, Clinton bought and paid for, foreign national put together, dossier of Russian lies. Now, Sarah is also reporting that back in April, the FBI refused to turn over documents that Chairman Nunes and others have been asking for, you know, phony claims of national security risks. And as we have seen, it's one excuse to stonewall after another, all to prevent Congress from knowing the truth and fulfilling their constitutional role. And Chairman Nunes, well, he's now putting his foot down and in the standoff with Rosenstein and the DOJ. Good for Devin Nunes. Take a look. We had a productive, what I thought was a productive meeting. And then after that meeting, they've done nothing but leak and leak and leak. Now, we don't know exactly who it is over at the Department of Justice or FBI. I'm not pinning any blame on people. But we're not going to go to another meeting where we don't get documents and then the meeting leaks out. Now, the chairman is getting close. The entire truth is now starting to come out, thankfully. And by the way, despite Rosenstein stonewalling. And now, because of all of these new developments, you have deep state actors, former, well, communist voting, John Brennan, how he ever became CIA director is beyond any comprehension I have. We know known liar, James Clapper, Sally Yates, we know her political agenda. They're all losing their minds because all of them are about to be exposed. Brennan lashing out at President Trump, tweeting, Senator McConnell, Speaker Ryan, if Mr. Trump continues along this disastrous path, you will bear major responsibility for the harm to our democracy. By the way, we're a republic. You do a great disservice to the nation and Republican Party if you continue to enable Mr. Trump's self-serving actions. Now, Brennan is up to his eyeballs in all of this. I am certain that's going to be exposed. And as we have been saying on this program, he's been lying about his involvement with this Clinton bought and paid for dossier for months, and he lied in front of Congress. And as for James Clapper, he's ensnared in the dossier scandal also. And Clapper, oh, what is his response? Just like Yates, just like Brennan, let's go after the president and attack him. I think that's uh, actually a very disturbing assault on the independence of the Department of Justice. And uh, I think when the president, this president or any president, tries to use the Department of Justice as kind of a a private investigatory body, that's uh, not good for the country. The big thing here is this is not about spying on, on his campaign. It's about what the Russians are doing. Were they attempting to infiltrate the campaign? And that was the concern. And that was, uh, it, in my, my belief, is what the focus of, of this whole activity was about. The same clapper bragged about the FBI spying on the Trump campaign and said it was a good thing? This is problematic. And then there's good old Sally Yates, who signed off on, yes, one of the Pfizer warrants like Rosenstein and was emailing with Andrew Weissman, the most corrupt member of Mueller's team, after she recused, refused to enforce the travel ban. Yates is also trashing the president. Why? To save and protect herself. Watch this. Donald Trump himself accusing the Obama administration of improperly targeting his campaign for an investigation. <coughs> uh, what's your response to everything you've heard over the weekend? Well, obviously, I'm not going to comment on the specific facts there. It's really up to the Department of Justice to decide what information should be made public with respect to that. But, you know, I think what we're seeing here is the president has just taken his all-out assault on the rule of law to a new level. Mm -hmm. and. This time, he is ordering up an investigation of the investigators who are examining his own campaign. You know, that's really shocking. Another hard-hitting interview by Liberal Joe. Now, all three of these deep state players are scared out of their minds. They're directly implicated in all of this. So it's time to ask, what did they all know? When did they all know it? And just like I've been saying about their deep state friend, James Comey, who, by the way, James, I warned you, you had the right to remain silent. You didn't listen. Anyway, instead of running their mouths, well, they might want to now begin to lawyer up, and many of them are. Yeah, James Comey hired three lawyers, the three people he leaked documents to. Great attorney-client privilege for everybody but me. Anyway, another big development to tell you about tonight. The soon-to-be-released DOJ IG report on the Clinton email server investigation is expected to slam FBI leaders just like Comey, Andrew McCabe, for taking weeks to review emails that were found on Uma Abedin's shared computer with Anthony Weiner. And the IG report is supposed to come out very soon. 
And if the Inspector General Horowitz does his job and his 500 employees, Comey and McCabe should be very worried tonight. All right, a lot of ground to cover. Joining us now.